Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, as Psalms 103, verse 1. Good morning, and welcome to Morgan Park United Methodist Church once again. Are you happy to be here today? Amen. Are you Amen. blessed to be here today? Amen. Amen. As we gather in this space together, let us continue to pray for one another in our time of separation, and continue to pray for your church and those within your communities. Uh, don't forget also, we still have time for the crop walk. So those of you who have not made donations up to this point, you may do so. Because in Proverbs 19 and 7, it says, Whosoever is kind to the poor, lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Amen? Amen. But also, on another note, we need to know how to take care of ourselves. Amen? Amen. We need to know how to take care of ourselves. Amen? You know, sometimes when we neglect our responsibilities financially, things don't go the way we want it to go. Amen? And then we try to come up with the money at the last minute, it's too late. Uh, Amen? And I can wait. You know, life get turned out, gas get turned out, and we start trying to make all types of bargains and all types of deals, but it's all too late. There's a report out right now about the coronavirus and the churches and the status of the churches. There are professionals or uh, experts or prognosticators, if you, if you will, that say that one out of every five churches is going to close because of this coronavirus. And it'd be even more after this year because they won't be able to pay for their bills over uh, the, the time of the winter, especially in the northern states. Yeah. I don't want to be part of the church that's part of the one of the four. I want to be part of the four. That's able to be stay open. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that means that we need to be more diligent in our giving, more consistent in our giving. And if we think that we have not, or we know that we, we all know what we have done and what we have not done. Amen? Amen. Uh, so we need to be able to uh, give a little bit more just to make up for what we haven't done in the past so that we may be able to forge into the future so that when we come back, we will have a place to worship, unlike some others who may not be able to be proactive. Amen? Amen. Just a reminder for everyone, uh, the church, or the charge conference is Wednesday, November 11th. At SPRC will be the district superintendent from 6.15 to 6.45 p.m. And the full conference will begin promptly at 7. This year's church charge conference will be Zoom, by via Zoom. And we click below and we have a, a link that will be on the website for you to join on the, for the video conference. The more part of the this sports news week. We all know that the restaurant business has especially hit hard by the pandemic. Loons Pancake House located at 11601 Southwestern is no exception. What you may not know is that Loons was the site of the shooting that resulted in one death and multiple injuries. The restaurant was not the target of the shooting, but their business was suffered greatly as a result. Loons has been a community fixture and a strong supporter of our United Methodist Union's pancake breakfast for years, providing the pancake mix, waffle mix, and other supplies. We would like to show our gratitude and support by helping them in their time of need. Please consider Loons for your dining in and carry out meals. Also, we have been designated November 2nd to 8th as Morgan Park United Methodist Church supports Loons Week. During this week, we are asking that every member make an effort to purchase at least one meal from Loons. Please mention that you are ordering in conjunction with our Morgan Park United Methodist Church supports Loons Week initiative. And lastly, thank you for all of your well wishes and encouragement during Pastor Appreciation Month. I was surprised and overwhelmed by your outpouring of gratitude, encouragement, and affection. I long for and look forward to the day when we all get together again in mission, in missionary, mid-mission. God's peace from Pastor Dennis. That is it for our announcements. Uh, let us pray at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to see another day. We ask that you put, in the right, put us in the right frame of mind and worship and praise, that we, we may be able to lift up your name on high. We ask that you remove any and all distractions that may hinder us in this place of worship. 
We ask that you bless and uh, bless this worship service as we lift your name and you anoint the word for us today that we may be able to hear something that we have never heard before. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And for the morning song or morning hymn we have is Oh Happy Day. They will hunger no more, 
and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb of the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord for the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank be to God. Because all humankind is of one father and is of one mother. When one dies, one chapter is not torn out of the book, but translated into a better language. And every chapter must be so translated. God employs several translators. Some pieces are translated by age, some by sickness, some by war, some by justice and injustice. But God's hand is in every translation. And God's hand shall bind up all our scattered leaves again for that library where every book shall lie open to one another. As therefore the bell that rings to a sermon calls not upon the preacher only, but upon the congregation to come. So this bell calls us all. No one is in the power. And death diminishes me. Because I am involved in all humankind and therefore never presume to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for me. Phil Baker. Dan Clark. Gertrude Frail. Dorothy May Lee.
Hera Stinson Bacon. Range Lewis. James Trace Jr. Daryl Foster. Rogers Alexander. Mary Mayberry. Eugene Brook. Lena Alexander. Leon Bolden. David Barnes. Martha Ruth Aaron. Sheila Parker. Carl L. Kemp. Olivia Love. Dorothy Loveless. Cynthia Moore. Sarah Daly. Pearlene Collins. George Freeman Jones. Ramon Howell. Alexi Lee Gates. James Walters. At this time, we'll just gather space for those uh, loved ones on their mind who would like to light a candle at this time. You may have the opportunity to do so at this time.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of remembrance, remembering the people who you have put in our lives, the people who have helped us, people who have given us laughs, people who have given us sorrows, people who have given us things that we probably would not have had if they never existed. But we thank you for all the experiences that you had, that we had with them. We thank you for the time that we remember. We ask that you continue to comfort us and bring remembrance of the good times. That we may be able to smile as we think of them. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us during this time of the pandemic and be with those who are uncertain of what's going to happen next from week to week, day to day. Lord, we ask that you also be with those who are in the hospital at this time, where they are experiencing separation from their families and can't be around anybody else from the outside world. Those who are looking for uh, a heart or looking for a kidney or looking for any type of things that they need to be able to have a, a healthy life, we ask that you give them an opportunity, a possibility to get themselves back together. Lord, we ask that you be with all of us here in this church, family, or in part. Comfort us, keep us together in this time of separation. We ask that you be with the leaders of this church, that we may be able to Follow them based on what you have given on their hearts and put on their minds, that we may be able to further your kingdom. Lord, we ask that you cover our city. As we need a healing here in the city, a spiritual healing, a mental healing. Lord, we ask that you cover our country as we get ready to go through some things that we don't know exactly what's going to happen next. Lord, we ask that you ease the pain and ease the anxiety that we all may have. Lord, we ask that you be with the families who are away from us in other cities, in other states, or maybe in other countries. We ask that you cover them wherever they may be. We ask that you cover our minds. We ask that you also cover the ones who are out and don't have any place to stay. We ask that you give us a chance to be able to help those, those who cannot help themselves. We ask that you are able to just, just be with us and let other people see that you do exist throughout our lives and that you just exist. But we ask that you just keep with us. Keep us where our emotions may be able to come out and be able to just touch each and every one of us in the world. And we ask that you show us where you want us to be. A lot of us are out of place. A lot of us are doing things that we think are right, but we need to be able to know exactly what you want us to do. Lord, we ask that you continue to cover us through this pandemic, especially now that it's about to get cold outside. Help us to be able to keep our lights on, keep our, our gas on so we can stay warm, so that when we get to the other side of this pandemic, we be able to draw other people closer to you. And people be running to Morgan Park wondering, what must I do to be saved? We ask all of these things in your name, especially in Jesus' name.
Today's scripture reading is coming from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, and it reads as follows. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to a mountain. He sat down with his disciples, and with his disciples, Mr. Abigail. Today's scripture lesson is coming from Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. He sat down and his disciples came to him. He taught them saying, Happy are people who are hopeless because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are people who grieve because they will be made glad. Happy are people who are humble because they will inherit the earth. Happy are people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be fed until they are full. Happy are people show mercy because they will receive mercy. Happy are people who have pure hearts because they will see God. Happy are people who make peace because they will be called God's children. Happy are people whose lives are harassed because they are righteous because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are you when people insult you and harass you and speak all kinds of bad false things about you, all because of me. Be full of joy and be glad, because you have been great, you have been given great things for in heaven. In the same way, you for rats, the prophets who came before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
be here. I'm happy to be with you this Sunday morning. I'm happy that God has seen me through um, this really difficult season of life. I've got an awful, awful lot to be happy about. And I suspect many of you this Sunday morning do as well, but let us take just a few minutes to focus our attention on this morning's scripture reading and see if it makes any sense to be happy. Now, you all heard this scripture reading read in our hearing uh, in the Common English Bible Translation. And I have to tell you that the first time that I heard this scripture in the Common English Trans Common English Bible Translation was when I read it in preparation for this morning's message. And I heard, happy are those who are hopeless, happy are people who grieve, happy are people who are humble, happy are people who are hungry, happy are people who show mercy, happy are people who have pure hearts, happy are people who make peace, happy are people whose lives are harassed, happy are you when people insult and harass you. And I've got to tell you that when I heard this scripture read, in the common English, the way you and I talk, not holy talk, not church talk, not old English talk, but in common English, for the first time it was opened to me. For the first time I was able to receive it. I was able to really, really hear it. When I shared with the worship team that, that, that I wanted to lift this scripture passage from the common English Bible translation, I heard audible groans. Because we're more comfortable with holy. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And blessed are you when people revile and persecute. Now, I've got to admit, I've been a clergy person for 20 years, and I've never been completely clear about what the word blessed means. And so when I saw this new translation and had to defend this new translation, I pulled out my dictionary to try to understand what was going on here. Blessed means to be endowed with divine favor and protection. In that context, these verses make sense. Endowed with divine favor and protection are the poor in spirit. Endowed with divine favor and protection are those who mourn. Endowed with divine favor and protection are the meek. And so on and so forth. But I wonder how many of you actually knew that. Because I can actually admit that I did not. And that's a lot of words to have to come up with, endowed with divine favor and protection every time you just want to say, blessed. So maybe a simpler word might do. I discovered that there was a, 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 another word that seemed like it made sense. Favor. Favored. I've heard folks say, blessed and highly uh -huh. favored. Uh -huh. How are you? They're blessed and highly favored. Borrowing words from Mary when she received what should have been good news, but it actually was terrible news. That as a virgin, in a culture that had certain expectations for how a young woman would conduct herself, that she had showed up pregnant while she was engaged to be married and pregnant by someone else other than the one to whom she was engaged. Blessed and highly favored. Mary was able to claim it. Do you and I, have you and I always really, really known what it means to be blessed and highly favored? It means to be endowed with divine favor. But watch this. If you do just a little bit more homework, semantically speaking, happy is a completely appropriate substitution for blessed. So that happy are those who are. Happy are those who are poor in spirit. Happy are those who are meek. Happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Happy are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted. 
persecuted you when you are reviled and persecuted. The common English translation of this scripture reading began to open this passage of scripture up to new, to new possibilities. But there were still parts of the language that troubled me way deep down in my soul. You see, this scripture passage says that happy are the poor in spirit. Happy are the meek. Happy are those who are persecuted, and happy are those when you are reviled and persecuted. I don't know about y'all, but I'm scratching my head. <laughs> And the opposite of being persecuted for righteousness sake is prospering through wrongdoing. When seen through that lens, it, it makes perfect sense to be happy even when you are being persecuted for righteousness sake. I got a bunch of stories out of today. So today, I got a bunch of stories out of one grocery store for today. Let the church say something. Amen. Amen. I'm at the self-checkout at the grocery store just before it's time for us to record for service because I needed a quick snack. And as I finished checking out my, 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 my order, I realized that there's a $20 bill hanging out of the machine in front of me that somebody had requested cash back and had forgot to get the money. And I looked at it for a hot second and I thought to myself that I might prosper myself by $20. <laughs> and no one would know. So I pulled the $20 out of the slot and I carried it over to the service desk and I explained my little story and the lady looked at me like I was crazy and I walked away and thought to myself, I wonder, I hope that person gets their $20. I hope that I might be happy for doing the right thing. when you are reviled and persecuted. You see, I've learned something a long time ago. That God has given me a joy way deep down in my soul that the world didn't give me and that the world can't take away. You see, what I want you to know this Sunday morning is that as we juxtapose these images of, of lifting up those who have gone on to glory, as we figure out and struggle through this life, 
that these promises that Jesus makes in the Sermon on the Mount, these promises about being happy, even in difficult and trying and hard circumstances, that these promises are not an on-the-other-side kind of promise. God promises us that in Jesus, he is a very present help in the time of trouble. Uh -huh. I, uh, I have a little experience with grief and loss and mourning. Come bad news. Talk of this and that. Well, give it all you got. Don't hold back. I should probably warn you, I'll be just fine. No offense to you. Don't, Don't waste, waste your time. time. Here's why. Because I'm happy. Clap along if happy. you feel like a room happy. without a roof. Up. Clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do.
joining me now in the service of word and table. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to love, live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in the being church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. God's peace. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks it's, and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join them their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave up himself for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you and broke the bread. Gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us gathered and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you, take and eat. The cup of God's salvation, take and drink. I would be remiss if I didn't um, lift my brother, uh, Reverend Charles Strait, Pastor Strait, um, in prayer. He would uh, be with you, uh, Faith, um, but for um, being seriously ill, but um, doing quite well uh, and recovering. Um, so let us keep him in our thoughts and prayers as we move forward from this week. Now to God and Jesus with us, and who keeps us, whose divine favor is upon us, who invites us to be happy, even in the midst of our trials. To God and Jesus be all dominion, glory, honor, and power this day and forever. Let the gathered church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.